Hi there, boys and girls. Time for story time with Mr. Riddle. Today we're going to read the story Chirping Crickets. It's written by Melvin Berger and illustrated by Megan Lloyd. It's late in the summer, and the day is nearly over. The sun hangs low in the sky. Listen, the crickets are loudly chirping. You can hear crickets chirping almost everywhere, in parks and woods, in fields and on lawns, along country roads, even inside your house. It's the male crickets you hear. They usually stay in one spot and call the females to them. Most of the females cannot make sounds. A male cricket does not chirp with his voice. He makes a chirping sound with his front legs. Each wing has a sharp edge called a scraper, and the wing also has a long bumpy vein called a file. The cricket lifts, it, lifts up its front wings and rubs the scraper of one wing against the file of the other wing. Chirp! Back and forth he rubs the two wings. Chirp! Chirp! Here it talks about you can make sounds kind of like a cricket. It says, would you like to chirp like a male cricket? Get a piece of stiff paper and a nail file. If you rub the file against the edge of the paper, the sound is almost the same as a cricket. <clears throat> we'll have to try that. The ears of a cricket are not where you, where you would expect them to be. They are under the knees of the cricket's front legs. Each ear is a tiny hole with a tight tissue thin cover. Crickets hear chirping sounds through the tiny holes. Right down here, right below their knees. That's where their ears are. Isn't that strange? This is what happens. The chirps make the air move or vibrate. The vibrating air forms sound waves. The sound waves spread out to all sides. And when they bump into the cricket's ears, the cricket hears the sound. See the lines that they've formed? They're making that look like the sound, the waves of sound coming towards the other cricket. And he hears it. That's probably the female, so she hears it. A female cricket hears the male's chirps, and she jumps towards the sound. Closer and closer she gets. Soon she is alongside the chirping male cricket, and they mate. Inside the female, tiny eggs start to grow. When the eggs are ready, she uses a long pointed tube at the back end to make tiny holes in the ground. She lays the eggs inside the holes, and the eggs, excuse me, the eggs look like tiny yellow bananas. See her poking right down to the dirt to lay the eggs? Kind of look like bananas, don't they? In the spring, the eggs hatch into nymphs. A nymph is a lighter, excuse me, a nymph is lighter in color than the adult cricket, and it doesn't have any wings. <clears throat> See the little nymphs? Do you remember how we talked about a, a butterfly? It starts off as a little egg and hatches out as a caterpillar, so it looks kind of different. This is the same thing. They hatch out and look a little bit different, but then later it'll change to look more like the cricket or the butterfly. Soon the nymphs the nymph gets too big for its hard outer covering, and it wiggles out of its old skin and grows a new outside cover. This is called molting. The nymphs molt again and again. Some nymphs molt as many as 12 times, depending on the amount of food available and the weather conditions. After the last molt, they are adult crickets. Here it shows one molting. Looks like a cricket. Most adult crickets have two pairs of wings, front wings and back wings. Usually the wings lie flat over each other. The back wings are bigger than the front ones, and some crickets use these for flying. 
The front wings in males are used for chirping. So the wings folded flat, kind of hiding back behind. <clears throat> like all insects, crickets have three pairs of legs. The two front pairs are small, but the back legs are big and strong. The cricket uses them when, it's jump when it jumps or flies away. Some crickets can leap as far as two feet. That's about as far as you can hop. <clears throat> crickets have two big eyes. Each eye is made up of many tiny eyes. They let the cricket see in many different directions all at the same time. But a cricket's vision still isn't very good. In fact, crickets rely more on their ears to protect them from danger. Few crickets, excuse me, few enemies can sneak up on a cricket. You know that if you've ever tried to tried to catch a cricket. See your eyes. If you look closely, there's lots of little teeny tiny spots, teeny tiny eyes looking in all different directions. Multi multifaceted eyes, they're compound eyes. The cricket's mouth is at the front of its head and it has no teeth, but its strong jaws are able to cut up the leaves and small insects that it eats. <clears throat> Two long, thin feelers on its head also help the cricket. These feelers are called antennae. Some antennae are longer than the cricket's whole body. Antennae, or antennas, can help the cricket find food and alert them to danger. Thousands of different kinds of crickets live around the world. Field crickets are the most common. They are about one inch long and are dark brown or black in color. Field crickets mostly live in tiny tunnels in the ground. Male field crickets sit in their tunnel entrances all day and chirp loudly at night. At the same time, they are watching out for danger. If an enemy shows up, the male field cricket gives a high piping chirp and then into the tunnel he pops. You can also find ground crickets in the United States and Europe. They are brown or black like field crickets, but they are only about half the size. Ground crickets settle in damp places such as grassy river, ba river banks, and their songs sound like the tinkling of bells. Many ground crickets hide during the daylight hours, but at night they are very active, eating, fighting, and mating. <clears throat> so ground crickets and field crickets, very similar. Tree, cr tree crickets are the same size as field crickets, but they are pale green or white in color. Their very long antennae reach back to the very tips of their rear legs. Male tr tree crickets do not chirp alone. Instead, they chirp in groups. A typical chorus of tree crickets may have hundreds of males, and their high-pitched song sounds like chee 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 chee, just like that chee 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 chee. <laughs> tree crickets hide in trees, bushes, and tall grass. Here they find the smaller insects that they like to eat. They kind of look like aphids. It's another type of insect that helps us. Oh, not aphids, excuse me, lace wings. That's what I was thinking, lace wings. They eat aphids. House crickets are best known in Europe, and they would rather live indoors, especially in warm places. Their favorite spots are near stoves, fireplaces, or heaters. These light brown or yellow crickets endlessly repeat their high trilling sound. And many people believe that house crickets bring good luck. Having a cricket in your house, they say, means that nice things will happen to you. They're more of a soft-shelled cricket. <clears throat> the sky is very dark now, and the loud chirpings of the crickets fill the air. It is the nighttime sound of summer. I bet if you listen tonight, you'll probably hear some crickets outside. Maybe ask mom and dad if you can sit on the porch and listen. At the very end, it talks about having a pet cricket. It says it's fun to catch and study a pet cricket for a little while. Find a big clean jar or a clear plastic container with a wide neck and cover. Put an inch of dirt in the jar and ask an adult to poke lots of holes in the cover so the cricket can breathe. Take your jar outdoors late, excuse me, Excuse me, take your jar 
outdoors late some afternoon near the end of the summer. Walk around until you hear the sound of the chirping cricket. Gently tap that cricket into your jar and then screw on the cover. At home, you can open the jar and drop in some food. Crickets will eat bits of lettuce or bananas, moist bread, a drop of honey, or even dried dog or cat food. It's good to add the egg. an egg carton cup is for, for shelter because crickets usually don't chirp unless they feel safe, knowing they have somewhere to hide. Watch your cricket jump around and eat the food it has and listen for its chirp. Enjoy your cricket for a day or so and then let it go. Put it back where you found it. Crickets don't like to be in cages. They need their freedom the same as you and I do. <clears throat> you can't cr keep your cricket forever, can you? It would die, and that would be sad. You wouldn't want to be in a little jar or a cage. It also talks about some people use crickets to tell the temperature outside. On the very end, there's other little fun activities it suggests. If you look online, I bet you'll learn a little bit more about chirping crickets. Hope you enjoyed our story today. And I did want to talk to you a little bit briefly about sometimes kids step on crickets and little bugs. But remember, that's not very nice, is it? Would you want somebody to step on you? No. So be nice and be kind to animals and those not as strong as you. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.